Welcome to Montgomery Today with Montgomery General Hospital. We've got to have another except, uh, exceptional episode for you today, and uh, we're here with Paul Perdue from the West Virginia Challenge Academy South. Uh, Paul, welcome to the program. And uh, you guys have uh, brightened Montgomery up. Well, you get us out of bed early in the morning, <laughs> and uh, you know, it used to be the tech students and the bells and all that stuff that, that went off. And uh, now we hear the chants of the cadets, and it's a welcome sound in town, and, and, and we welcome that. And we want to welcome you to Montgomery today. Well, thank you for having us, Mayor. We appreciate it very much, and we're, uh, we're happy to call Montgomery home. So, uh, if you would, Paul, tell us a little, a uh, little bit about yourself. How you ended up here in Montgomery and, and with the Challenge Academy, and a little history background. Uh, for me, I mean, I, I started at 17 into the guard. Uh, did that for nine years, uh, and then after that, went to the Charleston Police Department. Was there for 20 years. I had the golden opportunity at the end of my 20. Uh, I left a little bit early uh, because this opportunity became available. Um, getting here has been one of the best changes in my life. Um, I get to see the flowers grow now and see the positive stuff on the other side, if that makes yeah. sense. So this has been a, a very welcome change of all the stuff that I was able to see as a police officer when I was on the streets, of things that I would like to have seen changed or help that we could have brought. And now I get to be a part of that um, with this academy here in Montgomery. You'd be part of the change. Yes. I mean, you saw it on the streets and uh, probably thought, man, if I could do something to help, yep. that, and, and here you are. Yes. And, you know, all, all, so many of our guests say they're just tickled to be here. We've had uh, people from Montgomery General Hospital come in that yep. left and came back, and, and the same thing you said, uh, you know, the greenery, the beauty, the river, yep. just uh, it's a little different uh, out here in the foothills of the Alleghenies than it is in the city of Charleston. It is that. Um, but... <clears throat> Talking about a typical day at the academy, uh, could you just walk us through what time you get up? And I know it's early. I can tell you that. It is early. It is early. The kids, uh, that's, that's one of the big lifestyle changes the kids see when they come. Is They get up at 5 in the morning. Uh, they'll go out and they'll do physical training. Uh, they're having breakfast and they're in class by 8 o'clock. And then their day is pretty much tied up from then on. They're in class until about 4. Uh, they organize the athletics in the evening. And then they go to chow at dinner. Uh, after that, you know, they got some study time and things like that, but their day is, is full. And that's, that's the, the goal is that, is to, to achieve some of that um, structure and those things that are missing in the everyday life. Because um, traditional school is not for everybody. Correct. And um, there are a lot of different versions of school out there now, but for our kids, the quasi-military effect has a, a great role in, in bringing them around to seeing that structure and having a day in and day in out and being able to count on something and knowing what's there. They don't have to pick out what they wear every day. We pick it out for them. So exactly. it and makes it easier. I wish you were around when I was growing up. Well, that's A little structure too. wouldn't hurt me. You know? Me too. I think uh, it's good for all of us. It is. And um, you guys do a lot of community service. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you, and, and not just here in Montgomery or Smithers, you go other places. Um, could you share a few? Of, I think you've done some in Beckley. And, have you done any in Charleston? I don't know if you've done any in Charleston. Uh, yeah, actually kicking off the Sternwell Regatta last year. The kids were back in there to help. Uh, they needed help uh, uh, with getting some of that stuff organized in our kids. We can provide that manpower. and We were able to do that and give the city of Charleston a lift to help them out. Uh, they've been great partners with us. Uh, and then same thing here in Montgomery. We've done paintings, murals, painted lines on parking lots. Uh, helped in any way that we can. We picked up Route 61 out here, uh, getting ready to put our sign up as, uh, you know, our Adopt a Highway program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are helping clear trails. Uh, we were partners with the Morse Creek Watershed right up the road here with keeping the streams clean and, and helping them with any project they've got going on. We've partnered with the National Park Service to help them with some, some stuff. Uh, the state parks, West Virginia DNR has been an awesome partner for us. Yeah. Um, they, in the last year, we were able to raise trout right here in Montgomery, right in our campus. And those trout have been stocked back up at Babcock. Um, so if you're out fishing up at Babcock, you may catch a, catch a fish that was raised right here at the Tech Center. Uh, so if people want to keep up with you, I follow you on Facebook. Yes. Uh, yep. I get a lot of stuff, and it's really good stuff. So could you tell the viewing public uh, if they want to follow uh, what you do, and um, how do they do that? Just 
go to Facebook and follow the Challenge Academy? Yep, go to Facebook, find Mountaineer Challenge Academy South, and follow us. We try to keep as much posted on there as we can so that parents and friends mm -hmm. can keep up with the kids as they go along their journey because it is a journey. Yeah, it it's is. a 22 week journey that these kids start out at. And, you know, if they've got the discipline and the mindset to be able to take that on, I think that shows who they are as a person at the end of 22 weeks. You know, it's amazing. I mean, uh, of course, I've been here since you started and, and participated in some of the things when they come in, their check-in and that type of stuff. Not too much that as, as some of the programs throughout the, the uh, term. But uh, when these kids come in, um, they're like a slinky. Yeah. But when they leave, they're at attention. It's I mean, true. It's amazing the transformation that these kids leave here, and they leave with pride. Yes. Um, That's a big thing we see when they come in, the body posture. They have slumped shoulders. They come <laughs> in, they don't make the eye contact. They yes, don't. It, it's all about having, you know, that, that discipline that, that, that gives them the courage and the confidence when they walk out of here at graduation. And you'll see it uh, if you ever get to take part or watch one of our graduation ceremonies. It's an amazing thing. And I had uh, one individual come to the last graduation and, and came down, it was a delegate, and he came down and spoke to me and he said, this is the first graduation I've ever been to that I didn't know anybody that was graduating. Mm -hmm. He said, but it's the most touching uh, yeah. graduation I've ever seen in my life. And yeah. that yeah. means a lot because that means that you're getting it. Yeah. And you guys do a um, uh, Memorial Day, mm -hmm. uh, Veterans Day mm -hmm. uh, services. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, that was one of the things when we came here we thought was missing in the Upper Canal Valley was some ceremonies to recognize our veterans and the service and everything they've done for our country. And I think that's an important uh, aspect of a quasi-military school is to also pass those things along to the kids as they come through. They're coming from every county in, in West Virginia. They've got different backgrounds. Some of them are aware of military service, some aren't. And that's part of what we try to teach is to recognize that service and, and to appreciate those veterans who've came before us that allow us to have the freedom we have today. Well, I will tell you this, as a mayor, uh, I'm so proud of every class. Uh, when I go to the graduations, I usually have tears in my eyes because those kids have a future now. Yeah. So, Paul, what would you say to um, parents out there that may be, or grandparents, that uh, has a child that, that they may need some structured training and that type thing, uh, how do they get a hold of you guys? Well, the easy way is to just go on our website, and, and you can Google Mountaineer Challenge Academy, and it'll bring us up. Uh, go on there. You can start the application process. If you have any trouble in there, contact one of the phone numbers on there. We'll get a hold of you and call you back. Um, and, and the big thing to know is that this is for 16- to 18-year-old kids. Um, and these kids, you know, it's just traditional high school may not be for them. Some of the, the, the pandemics played a role in this. COVID has definitely played a role in some of the kids being behind on their credits. Uh, uh, different things have happened in life. We see a lot more grandparents raising kids now than what used to be. Um, and, and sometimes you just need that help, you know, and, and we can be that help. And, and we're here. Um, totally free program. There's no charge to it whatsoever. It's totally funded by the federal and state government. That's amazing. Uh, it's a National Guard program. Um, and, and, you know, they stay here for those 22 weeks and the things that they bring out of here aren't just, they can get their home high school diploma from their home high school. If they go to Oak Hill High School, the only difference in the diploma that the kid that has that's graduating up there is my signature's on it instead of the principal. Still says Oak Hill. Still says Oak Hill. Mm -hmm. so, they come out here with OSHA, OSHA certificates. They, uh, we do a scuba diving program where they get their open water certification. Mm -hmm. um, tons of things outside of the norm of, of regular school. And, you know, I bring this up because I laughed. I don't think you thought it was too funny, but you all do compete with the North Campus. We have, yes. And, and you lost one year. We did. And we I did. saw you get pelted with water balloons. Yeah, if you make a deal with somebody, <laughs> you got to keep up with the deal. So that's part of it. Is we always tell the kids that you know you're responsible for your own actions. And I had opened my mouth a little too far, so I had to eat those words myself. And I was responsible for my own actions as well. So, but it yeah. was funny. Paul. It was. It was. That's it. The and it was a lot was, of fun. I, I I laughed. I thought you know that's. That's sportsmanship right there. It is. The bad thing was they outnumbered our kids. So each one of their kids <laughs> got to throw balloons. So it yeah. was a lot of balloons. Yeah, you got hit with a lot of balloons. Yeah. Um, so one of the most touching things that I've been involved in is retiring the flag mm -hmm. ceremony. Yes. And, and I will tell viewers, if you have never seen a flag retired in the proper manner, um, you will have tears in your eyes. I did. And then... 
pile on top of that, it was young students uh, that were saluting that flag and, and uh, giving it its last salute before it was uh, disassembled. And uh, Paul, that, that program right there, um, that's something to showcase sometime. Uh, down in the gra- down in the green, and we'll get the public in there and let. That's amazing, and I I don't know if you can do it publicly. Uh, I don't it's know. more of a reserve ceremony, yeah. and it's one of those things that's sac- you know uh, it's one of those things you want to pay that uh, respect to the flag. So it is kind of a, a more personal uh, ceremony, but it is if if you know if you've ever seen it or taken part in it, it is one of those things you'll never forget as long yeah. as you live, because it gives you the meaning behind each and every stripe and each and every star and each and every you know, the field of blue, everything, what all that means, and, and it ties it all together, and you're saying your final thank you as you salute that flag for the last time. Well, I know when I watched it, um, it was amazing. And, yeah. and those kids, uh, they didn't just do it. They were engaged. They were. Uh, they were engaged in what they were doing. And um, uh, I would tell anyone that uh, if you haven't seen one of those ceremonies and you do get the opportunity and, and – uh, and then, lo and behold, uh, one thing I didn't know uh, until you showed up in my office is uh, uh, once the flag is burned, the grommets are retrieved from the ashes, and those grommets are a gift to someone. And uh, so I had a uh, gift given to me, and the lanyard was made by one of the students. Uh, it's in my office uh, center stage, and, and uh, I'll cherish that forever because I have a memory attached to that to that. Uh, and that flag that you got that grommet from was actually flown over the Tech campus, wow. so, which also gives it more meaning. Yeah. Um, but it's just, that's just one program that I participated in uh, or, or got the opportunity to watch. Um, I have done the uh, career day and the interviews and those type of things. And I want to tell you something. Um, these are real life skills yeah. you're yeah. teaching. Uh, in fact, myself and one of my councilmen were talking today about uh, that, that we don't teach in public schools how to make change. Yeah. Uh, if that computer at the cash register doesn't tell them, you know, yeah. it's what the change is, uh, or, or you throw an extra quarter in there, it really makes, messes everybody up. But, you know, back in my day, you had to make your own change. Yeah. But, so it's, it's real life stuff. It is. That you, that you all teach over there. Um, and uh, we're so proud of those kids when they leave here. I mean, it's like every one of them. Real quick, uh, and we've got about a minute left, could you tell us a little bit about the cadet that went on to bigger and better things? He did. We had a cadet here named William Farkas. Um, When he came in, he was in our second class. Um, From the start, he was the Corps commander, which means he was the number one cadet. He maintained that all the way through. Um, Just a spectacular kid. who went on and now he has found himself in his second semester at West Point. Uh, he originally went into the National Guard, went through basic training. Uh, he ended up going to uh, what was called Sapper School. Sapper School, if anybody knows, is a really tough school. He ended up being the honor grad. Not only that, but he was the youngest person to ever graduate from Sapper School. But now he's in West Point in his second semester. He's on the fencing team. He's doing spectacular and he's gonna make uh, He's going to make something of himself, make his family proud, and make Challenge proud at the end of the day. You're going to invite him back for a, when he graduates? And he will most, he'll be back before he graduates, i got a feeling, but he'll definitely come back after graduation. As but, well. And that's a message to uh, parents and grandparents. Uh, this, is, this is what uh, Challenge Academy South is graduating here. Uh, I mean, if you have a child that struggles with normal education, and, and not all of us are cut out for that, this is a great avenue because uh, these kids, when they leave here, they have a new outlook on life, and, and, and I witnessed that. So, Paul, thank you for coming in today. Is there anything you'd like to leave us with? Uh, uh, just that, that you know, that we're always looking for, for kids to come and join us here at the Academy. Uh, it, it is, uh, it's something I believe in firmly. I've seen it. I've seen what it can do, and I've seen the change that it has in the kids that have came through the door. And uh, we're excited to see the next set of recruits come in here in about two months because we're graduating these kids March the 10th. So Let's do it. March Let's the 10th we'll be graduating. And is it going to be Charleston, Beckley? We're actually going to be in Fayetteville to Memorial Building. Fayetteville to Memorial yeah. Building. So keep mark it, your it. calendars and, and uh, that'll be a great thing. So um, uh, thank you, Paul, again. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for what you do every day. Thank you for the kids you're giving us because uh, I just love every one of them and I don't know them. But when they leave here, they, they, uh, 
they are definitely going to be uh, good citizens for our country. And, and again, parents, if you can, if you need to uh, go out to that website, sign your kids up, your grandkids, whatever, and let Paul and them work their magic. So that's all for this segment. We'll be right back with more Montgomery Day. General Hospital is proud to welcome pediatric providers Dr. Bradley Marple and physician assistant Shay Criswell. At Montgomery Pediatrics, providing world-class health care for your little ones is our goal. And keeping your family safe during these times is of the highest priority. New patients are being welcomed and the entire pediatrics team invites you to come in and let us meet your children's needs. Experience the difference at Montgomery General Pediatrics. Back to Montgomery today with Montgomery General Hospital. We're here in the second segment of the show with uh, Dr. Reddy, orthopedic surgeon at Montgomery General Hospital. I uh, have uh, Debbie Hill and also have Abby with us today. And uh, we have a full house, so we're looking forward to some good information today on the show. And um, I have a question, Abby. Uh, uh, what made Montgomery General Hospital decide uh, to get back into orthopedics? Well, I mean, you know, we, have, we run the outpatient clinic and we also provide services in the inpatient acute care uh, nursing units. And what we were seeing is there is a dearth of services. You know, people have to wait for a long time. I would hear somebody break something or get injured, and they had to wait like four weeks, six weeks, um, uh, four days, five days to get to see an orthopedist. And then in the, the long-term setting, you know, we'd see uh, our patients who are inpatient, and it's really hard to get an appointment because you know, they're kind of lower on the totem pole because they're already getting some nurse, nursing services and um, getting reappointments, um, getting to see a doctor and something goes wrong and then they make all the way, they, they travel all the way to the clinic in Charleston in an ambulance and then they come back and they don't get to see the doctor because some things happen there. So we really thought that there was a huge need for orthopedic services in this area. And then luckily, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. Reddy, he, I knew him from, uh, from uh, you know, uh, socially, and then um, he, his family lives, uh, resides here. His children are studying in the local schools, so he wanted to be uh, closer. So he kind of showed a little interest that he might be willing to um, consider Mon working in Montgomery. And uh, we talked with the hospital, and we, I introduced the hospital with Dr. Reddy, and then uh, here we are. So, Dr. Reddy. Welcome to Montgomery. Welcome to the show today. Welcome to Montgomery General Hospital. Uh, we're, we're just tickled to death to have you here. Uh, if you could, tell us a little bit maybe about your background, what procedures you do, uh, if you would, please. Uh -huh. I'm an orthoped orthopedic surgeon, uh -huh. uh, specialized in sports medicine. But uh, I do a uh, whole spectrum of orthopedic uh, surgery and services. Common problems uh, are arthritis, uh, could be wear and tear arthritis, could be infective or inflammatory arthritis, um, all kinds of injuries, fractures, strains, strains, uh, sports injuries. Uh, I don't uh, deal with the back uh, problems, but mm -hmm. the rest of orthopedic uh, services, I, we can provide everything here. Okay. And uh, then you're in direct contact with the uh, obvious department and you guys work through the therapy process and, and uh, back and forth that way. So it, it's, really, uh, it's really a big plus. Uh, it's a one-stop shop. Uh, but uh, what do you think of Montgomery? Um, I like it very much. Uh, I started a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's been great so far. We are getting lots of patients. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very excited. So, what age range of patients do you see? Uh, I can see all age ranges, including infants. Uh, but the hospital, with the services we have, we cannot admit patients under 16. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand, but if they need outpatient uh, treatment, I can okay. take care of that. Like somebody, a child fractures a wrist or... So, do you do sports medicine? Yeah, I do sports medicine. I did specialization in sports medicine, fellowship in sports medicine, so I can take care of uh, all range of sport, sports medical injuries. 
So, and I'm just asking this because the public, I mean, the public doesn't realize an orthopedic surgeon, uh, you've probably got years of medical school, uh, years of, of uh, practice. Uh, uh, so give us a little bit of background on your uh, medical school and how you progress through where you did your practicum or uh, I'm not sure what they call it in the medical residency. field. Residency, yes. Uh, yeah. I'm originally from India. Mm -hmm. I initially trained um, at Venter Medical School there. I also did my orthopedic residency in India. Then I went to England. We were there for about uh, 12 years. Uh, I trained there, got uh, certification from the Royal College of Surgeons in England. Then about 12 years ago, we moved to US. Uh, as I said, I did training in uh, Boston as well as Minneapolis. I did sports medicine fellowship in Minneapolis. Then I started working. I worked in Williamson for three years. Uh, then I went to Kentucky, uh, a place called Cynthiana near uh, Lexington. I was there for about seven years. Uh, my wife is a radiologist. She has been here in Charleston all this time. Uh, so I thought it would be better for us to be together. So that's, that's why I decided to come closer to Charleston. We're so happy to have you here. And, um, Thank you. You've been around the world and a lot of experience and uh, Montgomery is uh, very uh, honored to have you here and privileged uh, with all of your experience and your background. What you bring here is amazing and um, I can, uh, Debbie and Abby and just a whole group at Montgomery General Hospital, they have, they continue to build, they continue to build and um, you're just another one of those uh, we are so happy to have you here. Glad you're back home. Glad you chose Montgomery. And uh, so, uh, <clears throat> will you be doing replacement surgery? I do uh, hip, knee, and shoulder replacements. Okay. Uh, with it being a small hospital, so we may not be able to do more complicated uh, uh, surgeries. Uh, if somebody needs a revision surgery, we won't be able to do that. Or if somebody has multiple medical problems, we may not be able to do that, but uh, I am planning to take care of most of orthopedic needs in this area. Uh, yeah, we we'll, uh, definitely will be doing that. Will be one of our. This area has a, has a big need, and and uh, it's just so good to hear that um, you know this is somewhat of a depressed area. Not everybody has a car to drive to Charleston, and it's just great to know that. Uh, we have people like you and Abby and the rest of the professional staff at Montgomery General Hospital. Uh, it's just it's just amazing. Um, do you have any services to help people who are having pain, stiffness, and hand issues? Uh, I do take care of uh, hand problems if somebody needs hand surgery or evaluation and uh, treatment for it. I can uh, I can do that, but uh, they may need uh, 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 hands. Um, Occupational therapy. Mm -hmm. So Abby, I think, will be the person who comes into picture in that case. Mm -hmm. And uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy, that's kind of backbone of orthopedic, ser orthopedic services. Mm -hmm. So that's an essential part of any orthopedic program. So you, you perform these surgeries at Montgomery General Hospital? Yeah, um, actually, I did one surgery last week. Um, wow. It was a good beginning. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm planning to do all my surgeries here. So, Debbie, if uh, he can be reached at his office at 304-442-2521, uh, correct? Yes. And uh, that could, now, and that leads me to another question. Um, to see Dr. Reddy, do, do, do patients have to be referred or can they go directly to Dr. Reddy? They need referrals. Um, you know, our goal in this program was to provide another service that we feel is, is very important to the community to get it close to home, but you do need a referral. Mm -hmm. Your primary care provider can send that referral, hey, they're having arthritis pain, they're um, you know, frozen shoulder, whatever's going on, to send that referral to the office and then we'll evaluate it uh, and then uh, schedule an appointment to come in and see Dr. Reddy. And you know, many cases, not every case is surgical. 
he may say, well, they need a joint injection or they need to come to physical therapy. Yeah. Sometimes our insurance prescribes what we need to do as well as the doctor does before you look at straight at the surgical procedure. A lot of insurances, are there radiology studies that need done? We provide all of those. Do they need to be evaluated and treated by physical therapy to see if that resolves the problem? He can navigate that system and get the patient to all those services and then if surgery is necessary and it is appropriate to be done at our hospital, then he can do that surgery there. If it's not appropriate because maybe the patient has uh, cardiac issues or breathing problems, then we can help get the right referrals to get the patient into an area where the surgery can be completed. So you had mentioned earlier, Dr. Reddy, that uh, you do uh, some shoulder replacements, some kind of joint replacements. What does recovery look like? Um, for that type of surgery? I mean, do you, is it a long-term recovery? Uh, recovery in the sense, once the patient had surgery, they will be admitted to hospital most of the time overnight unless there are any complications or reasons for them to stay longer in the hospital. Otherwise, after a day in the hospital, most people get discharged either to uh, their home with the home health services or to a rehab services, short-term rehab or even to a swing bed in the hospital to get more rehab uh, as opposed to an inpatient. Uh, then the physical therapy generally goes on for few months, typically about three months. Uh, but first two weeks, it's more intense, then gradually it gets easier and uh, uh, yep, typically recovery takes three months or so. Do you do uh, knee replacements? I do. I do knee yeah. replacements, hip replacements, and shoulders, yeah. I've got one coming. <laughs> <laughs> I do have one Greg, coming. If I could add, that's one of the other beauties <laughs> that, that made this relationship so appropriate. Abby and Brandon and their staff have always been very busy with orthopedic needs, which were referred from other patients or from, or from other providers of primary care. But with Dr. Reddy doing the surgery, and we recognize we have an older population here. Many times they can't go home with home health and come back to outpatient. We get patients from all over the state in our swing bed units, and our skilled units that we're doing a week or two weeks or four weeks of therapy on. Then we have to put them in a van and take them back to the orthopedic surgeon. This way they can have all that care right here. He can follow them up. And then when they're discharged home, if they still need therapy, they can come back to our therapy department and get that service. And actually, another piece of good news that you probably don't even know yet, we are actually moving our swing bed unit. In uh, the past, it's always been intermingled in our acute care unit, but we want to make sure that both the patient, their family, and our staff understand that they're there for rehab or and when they're in a swing bed unit, or maybe it's continued IV therapy. So we're actually creating what in our old intensive care unit that we haven't used for years. We're renovating it, and we're going to put our swing beds back there so they have that rehab mentality. It's a different, you're not in the sick role anymore, you're in the recovery role. So that will happen most likely by the second week in March, that that will physically move down the hall and be its own area within our acute care unit where we totally focus on the rehab, not only from the physical therapy standpoint, but get out of bed, get dressed. Would you like to have lunch in our little lounge? You know, the whole uh, moving out of the sick role into the wellness role. Yeah. So it's the whole program. It's the whole program. Yeah, so what we're planning is like, let's say he has surgery on somebody, so that from that evening onwards, we'll try to see what we can do with the patient, maybe get them up on a chair, or maybe walk a little, do a little exercises right then, and then maybe show them what they can do that evening. We're talking about people who are really willing and forward looking. And then next day morning, come in, have another session, and then depends on each person. Somebody might need, could go home right then, you know, and then come as an outpatient, do some, you know, something like that. Somebody might need a little bit more uh, intense rehab in the facility. That's where the swing bed comes in. And, uh, you know, we do the swing bed, then they go home, and then they come as an outpatient. And some people, so that's the plan we are working on. And we are preparing for that to work in collaboration. And the other part, what he was talking about in the outpatient, let's say they come and see him in outpatient, and then they can come to outpatient directly. And then we'll provide all that. And you know, I've been doing hand therapy for a long time, so that's the part I work on. And then Brandon, he's OCS certified, which is orthopedic rehab certified physical therapist. 
so he takes care of that part and then um, sometimes you'll, what will happen is some people might need a little longer rehab that's where luckily we have the extended care unit and the Montgomery rehab and nursing so so we I think we are kind of providing a complete package absolutely um, in this region yeah so yeah that's uh, that's fantastic and that's what we need um, you know the uh, raw areas uh, sometimes uh, we get what's left over but that's not the case in Montgomery General anymore we're providing first class upfront care for everybody it doesn't really matter uh, your age or anything like that and um, you know Dr. Reddy I, uh, I admire what you do because um, it takes a lot of courage uh, to, to cut on somebody but you have the expertise you've been around we're happy to have you here uh, and, and I know that if I had to have a surgery or a knee replacement I'd definitely uh, feel very comfortable if you were my surgeon and uh, getting ready to do that and um, really want to say thank you for coming to Montgomery General and is there anything in closing minutes here you'd like to add or any of you? Um, as I said I'm very excited to be here uh, we are planning to provide whole spectrum of orthopedic services uh, all kinds of fractures um, chronic problems joint replacements sports injuries even pediatric injuries we can take care of uh, and we have very good uh, therapy services so that's as I said that uh, goes a long way in yes. uh, managing patients. So I, th I think that, that I mean this kind of sets you guys apart when it comes to physical therapy because you got a medical professional right there on staff uh, it's amazing. Uh, and Debbie, you know, any last it's been words? It's an easy transition. I mean, there's always growing pains when you do something new, but Todd Ryan, who is our director of our surgery department, has experience in orthopedic surgery. He still actually moonlights in Charleston some, so he brings that level of expertise that orthopedics is not new to him from a nursing and a leadership perspective that he and Dr. Reddy can work hand in hand. We've got the top line of equipment coming in for his procedures. You know, there's no shortcuts here. This is a top-notch service led by a provider who's got a great track record and a nurse manager who understands orthopedics and obviously the rest of it we've been doing for a long time from the rehab perspective. And the other part, you know, I was uh, thinking right now, the ER, you know, like the Montgomery ER, let's say suppose somebody comes in 10 o'clock at night, something happens. Luckily there's the acute care, they could be there and then the doctor ready could come in the next day or depending on the schedule and things Correct. like that. So people are not left out in the limb, you know, injuries or uh, uh, mishaps will be kind of handled locally. So that's, I think we're kind of looking into that part too, it, the ER to... Um, it's amazing. Uh, and Debbie, hats off to you for the group you're pulling together and... We've got a great group. Just a whole team. Uh, and uh, I know we've got a, a uh, bright future. Uh, ahead of us and I'm looking forward to tomorrow I'm looking forward to uh, uh, come and seeing Dr. Reddy when I'm ready, uh, I'm but, ready. Ah, you're ready I know you're ready uh, but anyway uh, thank you Dr. Reddy welcome to Montgomery again sir and, and thank you all for being here and thank you Montgomery General Hospital uh, for what they do every day and so uh, please come back uh, the next episode of Montgomery today with Montgomery General Hospital I'm your host, Mayor Greg Ingram. Have a good day.